Hey guys, had a problem with the pedal last night, I was working on it for a few hours and um, I was just thinking about it this morning and I thought this might be a good example of um, a fault diagnosing video um, and just how you, how you go through the process um, of, of working out what the problem is. Now I've already fixed the problem so it's going to be a lot of talking um, and not so much um, video um, but if you keep up with me um, you probably get something out of this hopefully. So you tackle pedal fault diagnosing problems like you do with any fault diagnosing. You start with the most common, um, the most common problem, the most likely problem, um, and then you sort of work your way down to the more specific stuff. So here's the effect. It's a Grind Customs Feng Drive version two, um, which is a uh, Zen drive, and I'll tell you the conditions of the problem. So basically, um, when it's in bypass, you get a bypass signal when you engage the um, switch uh, when you engage the effect um, you don't get anything on the output totally dead totally dead sim uh, signal and nothing comes out the other end um, so um, the effect is tested before it went in and the effect worked um, so it comes back to the offboard wiring you know the effect works this is why we rock before we box so we know the effect works that's fine it's not coming from the effect it must be somewhere to do with the offboard wiring so this is my three pole double throw um, switchboard, the Deluxe, um, and um, and um, it's obviously could be an area that could be the problem. Maybe I'm using a prototype board that doesn't work or something like that. Um, I never made a prototype board that didn't work though, so um, I'm not totally sure about that. Um, so we've just got to try and work out where 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 the, sh where the short is that it shouldn't be there because when you get a dead signal on the output, it usually means that your um, your your effect signal, so um, not your dry signal, but the effect signal, so the one that runs through the through the effect and then back out again, um, is touching ground. Um, so you'd probably think, well, I would think that it would be with somewhere in the offboard wiring. There's no point checking the jacks to make sure that they work properly because you get a signal when the when the effect is engaged to um, when the effect is not engaged, you get a signal on the output. So if it was one of the jacks that had a short on it, um, then you wouldn't get a signal on either whether it's engaged or not engaged. So the jacks are fine, um, and then you could probably have a look into power issues as well, um, but it's not very likely. Um, so I've sp spent quite a bit of time in this. I actually I actually wired it up previously. And found it wasn't working and I thought that perhaps some solder had gone down those holes and made a short underneath the board which is a concern actually with these with these um, three pole double throw boards you want to make sure that you don't load it up too much because you could make a short underneath this PCB and you'll never find it um, you, you cannot get those those off and then if you start sucking the solder out it could suck the the, the bridge out as well so you're never gonna know um, so you need to be careful with that and that's actually the reason why with this second attempt, you can see I've only just placed a bit of solder on the edge of the of the three pole double throw because I wanted to make sure I wasn't making a connection underneath. Um, and even with this second one, I still have the same symptom. There's not nothing on the output. Um, so I'm starting to worry that the actual PCB that I've designed's actually got an issue with it. And I, and to cut a long story short, I spent a lot of time in dip trace. Um, going over it, I went over that board about 10 times to make sure it was working because obviously I'm selling these and it gave me a slight heart attack to think that I was actually selling something that didn't work. Um, but I, I, I found it hard to believe that I'd actually sold quite a few of these and no one had actually come back and said, man, there's something wrong with that board, it's just not working with it. Um, so I wasn't totally sure about that, you know, I just couldn't, um, I, well, I, I had to double check to make sure and I spent a lot of time checking it and it turns out that it wasn't the, um, the, the PCB. So what's left? The jacks work. PCBs assumed to be working, um, and there's no and there's no um, there's no bridges underneath. Also check to make sure there's no bridges between these um, these these pads. Um, obviously they're spaced pretty closely. Whenever you've got a close um, um, pad like that, you've got an increased chance of a, of a bridge. So scrape those out. Make sure they're fine, and they were fine as well. So the next thing I did was. I thought, well, perhaps it is coming from from something shorting out on this PCB. Perhaps one of these jacks is shorting out, like the actual the actual lug on underneath down there. 
could be shorting out underneath there as well. Um, and the lid was off, so it's not the lid, it's not the top part that's the problem, it's my, it would have to be down the bottom. So I took this PCB out, which I'm going to do right now. And actually while I think of it too, these nuts are sort of getting a little bit manhandled. You can see they've been a bit roughed up because I still use these for the um, nuts on the pots. I'm actually going to the hardware store today, so I might have to get a deep socket. I'll bring one with me and um, ask the person to get me a deep socket so that they'll fit um, over the top. A socket, so you can just use a socket. Much cleaner, doesn't rough up the nuts as much because they've been on and off about a hundred times, as you can imagine, when you get a really specific problem like this. Um, so the PCB's out now, um, and those were a bit of a tight squeeze to actually to get in those holes because um, it's one of these uh, PCB mounted, um, they're PCB mounted pots, so they um they, they can be hard, they can be tricky to line up. So I pushed this out and looked underneath just to make sure that there wasn't anything touching, and it turns out that they aren't. So that's not the problem either. They weren't touching. Probably difficult for you to see with this video. Get on the right angle there. They're not touching there. They're, there's a they're, it's close clearance obviously, but this is getting really tight in this um in this PCB. I'll go into that in the build report for this um for this effect when we do it. Um, but it is getting pretty tight. So that's not the problem either. So what? So so I decided to test it actually with this out like this just to make sure that that there wasn't anything else funky going on that was um shorting out on the board maybe. Um, and um, I tested it like this with it out. Put a cloth under it. Um, to hold it up, just zoom the camera back a bit so you can see a bit better. So you just put a cloth under it like that, um, just so it, so it's outside the pe outside the enclosure pretty much, and just to make sure nothing's you know like some tiny little connection or something is is shorting out on the on the enclosure because as you know, as you probably should know by now, the enclosure's ground, so you don't want anything touching the touching ground that shouldn't be. And lo and behold, it works. So why is it working with the PCB out like this, but when you put, uh, put it back in, screw everything back in again, doesn't work again. That's interesting. So if we take a look, <clears throat> the first thing I thought of, and this was actually the problem, was that something on the volume pot is actually shorting. I'm going to show you something on a schematic in a sec. Um, actually, I'll show you now just so you can see what I'm going to be talking about in this next bit. I'll just print one off. So this is the first schematic I could think of and um, it's pretty typical, sorry that's the printer still doing its little dance that it likes to do. Um, it's pretty typical of, um, of a volume pot uh, output volume control. Um, a, lot of, a lot of pedals have this um, and the Feng Drive has it as well. And as you can see on the output, it's the last part of the circuit. The signal comes, at, at this point the signal is at full volume um, and then you use this volume pot to ground, to, sh to send some of the signal to ground that's how the volume control works. As you turn it up and down, you send more of the signal to ground, so you lose more of that signal. So if you stick ground up the top here, um, on pin one, there's three pins on the on the potentiometer. If if any of those pins touch ground, uh, apart from sorry, uh, the, the pin numbers are one on the bottom, two in the middle, and three at the top. It goes from bottom to top. So pin one, two, three. Just visualize that on the on the potentiometer. If two pin two or pin three are also connected to ground. Your, your entire signal goes to ground. It's basically like having the volume control on zero. Um, all the, the maximum signal that's coming out here just goes straight to ground and you get a dead signal on the output. When I, when I mean dead, if, you turn your, if you've got a loud amp, you turn it up to like five, which is usually like a deafening sort of volume, and you get nothing, no, uh, oh, barely, uh, like effectively 99% nothing. There's no hum, there's no buzz, there's no nothing coming out the other side. You know your effect um, is, is, is being shorted to ground. Somewhere along here, it's going to ground. Um, and that's a, that's a sure indication that you've got a connection, um, a, a, an unwanted connection to ground. Totally dead output. So if one of those, if one of those legs, uh, those top two legs, pit, uh, leg three or two is touching ground, you get nothing on the output, and that is, that is exactly what we're getting in this in this particular situation. So if I lift up this 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 um, uh, PCB, you can actually see I've corrected the problem with tape. One of these legs was actually touching the housing of the pot below it. So when when it's out, it wasn't because it was loose and there was not as much tension. When it's in, it's a bit of a squeeze, and it's pushing down and touching the potentiometer, the housing of the potentiometer, which is sending 
the signal to ground because the potentiometer, this potentiometer here, which is what it was touching, when you put it in the enclosure, is in touch is touching the enclosure. So these these um, this pot housing is actually ground. In case you didn't know that, um, they're actually ground as well. So the signal output signal from one of these legs touching the um, housing of this pot, which is ground, so it's basically sending the output signal to ground. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something from it. Good to stick with a um, fault diagnosing uh, when you're trying to fault diagnose something because you learn a lot from it. Um, and, um, and that's how I've learned a lot from it, having pedals that don't work and then just um, persisting with it and you know, learning how it all, all fits together. But I hope you got something out of this video um, and, um, and learned something from it. I've got a working pedal, so I'm feeling pretty accomplished right now. And um, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.